Welcome. It is time to go beyond. Are you ready for this amazing plus ultra shoot style yoga? I am Riffwing Designs and I'm super excited to do this. I kind of got obsessed about My Hero Academia almost a year ago. It seems like a lot longer. And now we're gonna actually do a training like Deku. So to get started, first off, definitely, I highly, highly, highly recommend the playlist, which I've just posted in chat. If you haven't yet, definitely go to this link and try and play it in order. It is gonna start off with like the power stuff and then slow down at the end. So you wanna have the energy when we're doing all the crazy workouts and you wanna be calm at the end. If you can to play it in order, you either you do it through your desktop or if you have Spotify premium, that will also play it in order. So I'll just double check here. Okay, we're all set. And also, if you've been with me before, you know we've gone through the entire prop workshop, so take what you need. We have the option for blocks or paper towels to help hold us up from our block workshop. We have the option for straps. You definitely might want to do a strap again. We're doing legs today. You have the option for blankets, which I need to run and get, or towels or a pillow, and water. So let's all get our stuff right now. Into the depths, take the blanket. Okay, here we go. Definitely might want this for our knees later. So now I've got my blanket, my pillow, and everything else. And this is gonna be intense. So <laughs> get yourself ready. And again, take breaks if you need to. So one of the secrets about Designs for Zen is that you do what you need, and I can't see you, so have fun today. All right, everybody? So to get started, we're gonna go to standing. Standing mountain pose is going to be home base for us. If you need to relax or calm down at any time, this is where you're gonna be. So we're gonna first talk about Padabanda. Padabanda, it's a Sanskrit word. It literally just means foot and lock. So what you're gonna do, have a little bend in your knee and feel where your toes and your feet are touching the ground. This is really gonna help us to develop that shoot style leg strengthening. So first off, where your big toe touches the floor, the outside of your little toe, feel the edges of your toes, and then the back of your heel, and it kind of makes like a, a rectangle or a triangle. Feel all of those edges pressing down with, again, a micro bend in the knees. Shoulders should be back, hands open, and breathe here. Again, we're gonna go really fast. This is gonna be one of the more intense workouts I've ever done. If you can't already tell how excited I am by how fast I'm talking, get ready. Feel your breathing. Start to deepen it, evening your inhales and exhales. And if there is a type of breathing that you would like to do to start, feel free. We've gone over many in our previous episodes of Designs for Zen. And again, if you haven't seen them, please check out my YouTube also under Riffwing Designs. I'm doing even breaths in and out, making them nice and deep to oxygenate my blood. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Continue to breathe. Now that we have our Padabanda locked, this technique distributes our weight evenly in our feet. Feel the connection of your body with the earth. You never lose gravity entirely, even when you're flying through the air with superpowers, like in My Hero Academia, which again, this is based off of. Deku is our hero for the day. And Deku has a lot to go for him. Trying to become a number one hero. Now come into a normal breath if you like, or you continue this pattern. Deku's real name is Izuku Midoriya, and one thing that he said is that don't worry about what other people think, 
right? That's what we've already said today. Hold your head up. Good posture and plunge forward. And he also said he's never going to give up ever. So one thing, and it's kind of mild spoilers, is that Deku had to give up using his fists and his arms because he tried to be just like his hero. But then he injured himself and he needed to modify. And what we've taught in many previous classes is find those aids, find those modifications that work for you. And for Deku, he went from using his fists to using his feet in shoot style. So that's what we're going to work on today. Ways to train up your legs and your feet. And if you have any issues with hips or knees or ankles, do what works for you. But Deku, when he modified to using his feet, he had to find himself. So as we begin to set today's intention, I will invite you to try using meet yourself where you are. Meet yourself where you are. Don't go beyond yourself. Maybe you grow a little bit each time, but find where you are today. And if you'd like to have a different intention, feel free to set it. And we're going to seal our intention as we always do by inhaling arms up. Palms together, draw it down to heart center. Two breaths, first to cleanse, second to seal. Inhale. Exhale, deep inhale, and exhale, let it all go. For those that are joining us today, we are doing an intense workout. It is great to see you all here. Have your props ready that we've worked on before. Have your inhaler, have your water, and again, don't do too much. But as we get started, we are going to start by just doing our shoulder rolls here. Up back, down, forward, up, back, and down, just like we always do, four points. Now that we've gone through over three months of exercises, I hope this has helped you to find something that works. Now go the opposite direction, again, always finding balance, and your four points going backwards. Make sure you still have that loose knees, don't lock them. And then come to stillness. And if you need to do any neck stretches, find what works for you. I'm just going to rock my head from side to side. Remember, don't do full circles immediately. you got to warm up first. And then maybe, ooh, for me, i got some sticky points. So I'm just going to keep my head to one side, being gentle with this wig. <sighs> remember to breathe. Remember to keep your knees locked. Remember that pada banda, the banda. There are multiple bandhas, including your core. You're going to use your core here, too. And again, take a few more moments to find what you need to warm up your neck and shoulders. All right. Next, we're going to do our foot stretches. you got to get everything warmed up. Half of our actual workout workout is warming up. Very important, especially when you're using your legs. You don't want to be sore. And the other secret is, again, get your water. So for this, you're going up to your wall just like we did in wall yoga last week, taking your foot, putting your toes up against the wall, and then just kind of leaning into it. So I'm going like this. And my toes are lifted, and I'm leaning into the wall here. And if you have any other stretches that you like to do to stretch out, go right ahead. So I'm just leaning in. Feeling the stretch in the back of my calf here. Some people's ankles are more flexible than others. If this doesn't work for you, you can use a block or a blanket and try doing it that way. That's pretty high. This is why we have our aids, remember? And again, if you have missed one, they're all on YouTube. So you're stepping in and then just leaning forward, keeping the heel down and stretching out. And then the other side, always finding balance on both sides. Finding the aids that work for you. Finding your own stretch, your own practice today. Breathing into it. Noticing any tightness. And then come out. Next, we're going to be doing our quad stretches. Uh, oh, actually, we're going to do power pumps first. All right. So these are something I learned when I was playing hockey. So we're going to start again with the Padabanda. Feel your feet on the ground. Start shifting your weight back and forth. 
and then switch to one leg okay so we'll start with the right just kind of feel your balance again use the wall if you need to you can stand against the wall and hold yourself keep those aids in mind again so knee is not locked you're putting your balance in one foot and then I like to put my hands on my hips here just first feel it out and then you're gonna start to do pushing and if you need to you can keep your toe on the ground you're just stepping out to the side with the foot that's not holding your balance and then what I do here for the full extent is kicking back it's almost like you're trying to do swimming like a breaststroke and again hold yourself down if you need to flexing the foot as you're pushing back and then pointing the toes so you're warming up your knees and your ankles and your hips making your circles as big or as small as you need to here holding onto the wall if you need that balance this is not a competition you do not look like me so don't try to look like me and then other side first feeling the balance shift and then switching sides kicking out pointing the toe flexing in the forward kicking in the back there you go remember to keep that standing knee bent breathing feeling your ankles and your knees and your hips start to warm up here good a couple more breaths find your way to stretch all right now come back to center feeling your padabanda next we're going to be doing quads so it's a normal quad kick if you need a strap here this is the first one you can take your strap around your leg holding yourself in and use it to just hold your leg up or if you can grab your foot go right ahead trying to kick your heel in remember not to lock the standing leg notice I'm holding onto the wall here there's no shame and nothing wrong with it option here we're gonna start going wild again only do what works for you from here we're gonna go into dancer keeping your standing knee bent you're kicking your foot out into your hand reaching forward into dancer gaze should be at your hands that's extended you do not have to look like me but have fun playing with it this is stretching out my hips my lower back and my leg and try to gracefully come down remember decky is all about legs <laughs> switching sides kicking your foot back remember to use your strap if you need to you can use your strap and dancer too I'll show you that I'll make a loop to make it a little easier wherever you've got your quad stretch and then kicking back trying to find dancer see how I can make that longer or shorter and I'm wibbling and wobbling no shame in that remember this is a stretch should not be painful <laughs> and then find your way down if you need to do any counter stretches at any time feel free if you need water go right ahead all right now we're gonna do hips so everybody's gonna come down to the ground starting with butterfly you can do this laying down or seated bring your feet together splay your knees open the closer your feet into your body the more it's gonna stretch I'm gonna keep them out because I really want to get the hip stretch placing my hands on my knees straightening my back and shoulders and breathing I'm already feeling that heat build up find what you need maybe try and lean forward keeping a straight back now you're opening your hips here and if this doesn't work for you you can do one leg at a time find your balance breathing and from here you have the option if you want to you can extend your legs or again if you're doing this on your back congratulations we're going into happy baby doing it at the beginning here to help warm up our hips so recline down we'll go into that recline diamond meet here oops make sure my mic still works Oop. there we go that sounds good and reclined butterfly then bring your knees in hug them in tight 
Maybe do a little warm up by circling your knees around. Notice again that you're doing your hips here. Circle both ways and when you're ready, find your happy baby by drawing your feet in. And again, you can use a strap here. You can hold on to your legs or the soles of your feet. Really generously bend your knees here. Holding your feet. See how we're nice and wide like a giggling baby. And then kick around with it. Play around feeling. You're warming up your hips and your knees and your legs. This is your practice. <laughs> Do what works for you. And then find your way down doing any other movements you need from there. And we're going to come down into bridge. And you're saying, why bridge? Warming up our hips. If you have a block, you may want it here. Or again, that paper towel roll. Remembering what we learned together. Plant your feet near your bum so your fingers are almost brushing your heels. Planting your hands down, palms down, really pressing into the shoulders, just barely lifting your hips here. We're going to do steps, stages, because you can never go from zero to 100. Lower, then inhale, raise up a little more. Hold and breathe. Spiral those legs inwards. If you need to, you can put another block in between your legs and hold it there for extra power. Let it down. And this time, if you want, you can put a block underneath your sacrum, your hips, your sitting bones here, in somewhere that's comfortable and allow that bridge to just open up. Find where your arms need to be. Let your hips open here. And then maybe remove the block if it's between your legs. Play around with moving your legs in the bridge, just gently, gently. Maybe try and lift one. Again, you're warming up your hips and lower back. And then you have the option of going a little higher if you want, or staying there. If you have it in your practice, you're welcome to try a wheel. And then when you're ready, slowly, slowly, slowly lower back down. Find your breath. And then maybe you windshield wiper your feet here. Just letting both knees tuck from side to side. And then we're going to flip over onto our belly. And from our belly, we're going to do another leg warm up. This is a really interesting one. It's something we haven't done before, so I'll walk you through it. So from here, we're kind of almost in like a cobra or a seal pose. But you want to eventually get down so your arms are in front of you, more like crocodile, okay? But what happens, and keep looking right now, tuck your toes under so you have your legs, widen them past the width of your mat so you're tucking your toes. It almost looks like I'm trying to do a push-up here, okay? And then put your hand, head down and you're going to try and lift your knees, keeping your hips on the floor. And this is where if you need that blanket under your hips, go right ahead. You can hold it for up to 10 seconds at a time. Pressing into the feet, lifting the knees. Breathing here. And then let the knees go. Do a couple more at your own pace. Feel the strength of your feet here. And if you can't do it, go into crocodile or locust. Find something that works for you. What we're doing here is stretching our toes, ankles, and knees. One more time. Good. Now, untuck your toes, lift from the knees, your feet are in the air. We're doing reverse windshield wipers now, tipping your hips this way, as opposed to what we just did. Notice the difference. Feel how warm your hips should be getting by now. Okay. And when you're ready, we're gonna come up, back to seated. And we're going into deer. Look at how I've naturally just moved into it. Let me tuck myself back in here. There we go. Okay. So deer is where your legs are at angles. One foot is by the opposite knee. And then the other foot comes out, so you've got this angle. So from deer, just keep your sits bones down and feel your legs. Again, if this doesn't work, you can straighten your legs. One or the other. Find what works for you here. 
And as you're moving around, feeling your hips and your legs, maybe you start to invite deeper movement. Remember to go both directions. What I like to do here is when I get to the front, I like to lift my hips and lean down. And then you can even raise your arms up, go to the other side. Feel the movements of your hips. This time I'm lifting my six bones, warming up those hips and knees. And now we're gonna do our magic ninja kick. So if you can do it, just switch to the other side. Remember which knees are which, and then you can plant, flip over, and somehow that did not work at all. <laughs> this is why we play. Oh, look at, hey, okay, we did it. So switch to the other side. <laughs> Find your deer on this side. Notice any differences. Both sides are not the same. Just like Deku had to find a style that worked for him, maybe you need to find modifications that work on each side. Again, rocking and noticing where your body is here. Breathing. And then maybe inviting the arm movements, lifting your hips when you go the opposite direction of your feet. Just feeling it here. Okay, now we're gonna get into squats. And again, if squats aren't your thing, try these. These are warm-ups for squats, all right? So first thing we're gonna do is find our way to standing any way that gets you back up. Maybe get a drink while you're doing this. Okay, so we're coming back to our home base here, our mountain pose, locking your padabanda, knees bent slightly. Then pulling your belly in, shift the weight to one foot and just again like we did before with the hockey pull in your leg but this time we're going to press our toe forward and then drag it in so notice my standing knee is a little more bent and I'm reaching the opposite foot and dragging the toe in again hold on to the wall if you need it do this about 10 times slowly 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 so you're working on your hips and your legs, your balance, your foot strength, and your dexterity. And this strengthens your knees too. Okay. And then the other side, switch your weight after you come to the center and then start to drag your toe, keeping that standing knee bent just a little more, but keep your Hips straight, don't tuck your tailbone too much. Okay, breathe in here. Finding what you need. Okay, come back to center. Mountain pose, feel again. Big toe, little toe, heel, all pressing in. The outside edges of your feet often don't press as hard. Now is the time to really focus on that. And now we're going to do, again, very similar to what we did with our little hockey kicks. We're going to shift our weight to one foot and then do it from the side, pointing the toe and dragging it in. Notice your squat's deeper now. Okay, so you're pushing to the side and you're dragging in. Okay. Keep going. And once you get to six, switch sides. Finding what works for you. Remember to come to standing before you squat on the other side. Remember to pull your belly in using the strength of your core. Okay? This is about exercise, not about looking good. All right. Now we're going to do tiptoe walks. So come to the end of your mat. Find your mountain pose. Inhale, lift up onto your toes, and you can put your arms wherever you'd like. The idea is the slow motion, lift and exaggerate the motion of your legs, staying on your tippy toes as you take very, very small steps forward and back. It's not about speed. It's about slow motion to really feel the use of your toes and your legs. When you get to the top, walk backwards. Come to center, staying on your tippy toes. Okay. And do two ups and downs before you lower actually stay on your tippy toes if you can <laughs> i know i go really slow and i'm very wobbly so i take my time 
And if you need to, maybe try lifting your knees a little more. Just a little bit more exaggeration. Okay? And we're finding our way back to the back of your mat, staying on your toes. And here's where we're going to widen our stance, still on our tippy toes, and start to squat. Find your squat. If you need to, again, put a block underneath it. Have a block ready to land on. Okay, you can lower down to your heels anytime if you want. Heels will give you a deeper ankle stretch. And this is in yogi squat, so our elbows are touching our knees here. Feet can be down. Maybe you have to adjust your stance. Maybe you have that block underneath, but don't sit on the block. Just use it as an aid. Breathing here. Now, we're going to first do an ape movement. So it can be arms together or arms separate. I'll show you both. So your hands are in a diamond, inhaling up and down. So you're staying in a squat and moving your arms. Or if you like, what I like to do is more of the ape movement, so hands up from the side, reaching down and then up. So you're shining. You're actually lifting with your feet a little bit. Feel the burn. This is leg day. Now we're getting intense right here. Breathing, folding over, inhale, coming up. Two more. One more. All right, now here's your option, right? If you want to go to crow, <laughs> if it's in your practice, now is the chance. And if you haven't done it, you're taking your hands here, putting your knees to your elbows, planting your hands, hastamanda, and trying to just lift one foot or maybe both. I can't do much and my coat's really slippery, but just play with that. Ooh. And you know, I'm actually a little tight from that, so I'm again just gonna do some windshield wipers here. Find what works for you. Okay, next we have to do hero pose, absolutely. So again, maybe you need a cushion underneath you. What we're gonna do is go onto our knees. We're gonna do challenging hero pose. So instead of just going down onto our feet, Tuck your toes. This may burn. Try and stay with it, but if it's too much pain, please, please, please stop. So lowering down with your toes tucked under. Sitting straight. Feeling everything as you begin to relax. And if your toes really hurt here, that means that they haven't had a lot of stretching. Breathing. We're going to do 10 more seconds. Again, come out of it if you need to. Okay, ready? Lean forward and then start to tap your feet. Just to cool them off after that. Now, option for reclined hero. This could be, again, a little bit too much for some people, so maybe you need a mat or a block behind you. But you're going into normal hero so your toes aren't tucked. And then use your hands and try to fold backwards. <laughs> so it's kind of like doing limbo, really low. And again, only go as low as you can go. But this is what a reclined hero looks like. So I've got my shoulders down, hands by my legs, really intense stretch on the quads. And again, this may not be for everyone, but if you can get here, breathe into the stretch. Are we warm yet? Oh, all right. Six more breaths. When you need to come out, keep your chin tucked and find your way back up. It may not be graceful. And what we're going to do now is we've got some time because we're going so fast. We're going to do some sun salutation bees, which are really good with legs. So grab a drink. We're going to come back to standing. Meet me in mountain. Excellent. Coming to the top of our mat. Inhale, arms up. And then we're going to start to exhale and lower into that almost squat. So kind of going into a lightning bolt, feeling our legs here. Exhale, fold. Now this is our first fold, so maybe hang here for a moment. Keep your knees bent. Maybe you can put your arms across. Let your head go. Maybe nod yes and no. 
and then find your stillness. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Plant your hands, step back right, left into plank, holding here. Then option to go into your chaturanga or knees, chest, chin, lowering down, finding either your cobra or your up dog, pushing back into down dog. First down dog of the day. Feel, maybe pedal at your feet. Keep your head loose, keeping your gaze towards your feet. Remember, more of a bend is always good. Warming up our knees and ankles here. And then gotten the stillness. Rolling those shoulders back. Then inhale, right leg comes up, stepping through. We're coming into lunge. You can do a low lunge if you want with your hands down, or you can go into high lunge. Leg day. Breathe here, shoulders back. Then plant your hands, stepping back through your plank. Do another knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, up dog. Into your down dog. Opposite foot forward, stepping into your lunge on the other side. Breathe here. Plant your hands, another flow. Stepping back through your chaturanga or your knees, chest, chin, into your cobra or up dog, pressing back into your down dog. One breath. Then walk your feet forward. And we're going to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And now we're going to go sink into a full chair pose. So our feet are a little wider. Knees are bent. Arms are up or at our heart. Don't bend forward too much. Holding here, breathe. Keep breathing. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And then all the way back up, finding our way to mountain pose. We're gonna do one more set. Inhale, arms up, back to chair. Breathe here, you've got this. Breathe. This is the leg salutation. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Plant your hands, step back, left foot into your plank. Chaturanga, knees, knees, chest, chin up. And then back to your down dog. You can always find child's pose if you need it. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, step through, lunge. High or low. Breathe here, shoulders back. Exhale, plant hands, step back. One more flow. Find your way to down dog. Inhale, opposite leg, this is right. Step it through, lunge on the other side. Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Plant your hands, step through. Last flow, chaturanga, up dog, down dog. In dog, take two breaths. Good. Walk your feet forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhaling, coming up in the chair. Last chair. Hold it. Feel your hips spiraling in. Maybe take your hands to your chest, ready for a twist. If you can, elbow comes to opposite knee. Don't let your knees go in front of each other. Keep your knees together. Breathe. This is tough. Inhale back to center. Keep holding it. Other side, elbow to leg. Don't let your knees go ahead of each other. They should be even. Breathing. Hold, 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 hold. Center. Breathing. Two more breaths. Slow, slow, slow. There we go. And fold. Ooh. You got this. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And then really shine up. Oh, coming into our mountain. You did it. Sun salutation B is part of leg day. Get a drink. Find your breath. Good work. Oh, goodness. There we go. All right. Mm-hmm. You're saying, what else could you possibly do to torture me, right? One more. <laughs> so now we're going to go into, from our hero's pose, we worked on our legs. 
we're going to go into pyramid pose. So similar to our lunge, except this time our hips are on rails. One foot's forward, one foot's back. They're both parallel. Maybe you can always widen it up too. It's about two feet between my feet here. So I'm facing forward. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then from here, you're going to bend your back knee and come down. And if this isn't uncomfortable, do it another way. But you're going to come down into like a racer squat. See that? So let me show you again. Pyramid, straighten, uh, bend back leg, and then just kind of crouch. I'm lifting up my back heel, planting my hands. So now I've just got my toes touching the ground. Heel is up, knee is down, but not touching the ground. And my chest is not resting on my front leg. I'm holding myself here. Okay, now option, if you want, put the weight in your front foot, take the back foot, step it back, and then pull it in. And do six, five, four, three, two, and one. Tuck it in, step back, lift back into triangle. Don't lock your knee here. Inhale up, come to mountain. Whew, I felt burn in that front leg. Nice work. But we have to do the other side now. So, center. Feel your padabanda. Come to pyramid with the other foot in front. Straight legs, feet on tracks, about two feet distance. Straighten your back here, breathing. Bend your back knee, start to fold, scrunching down into runner squat on the other side, like you're just gonna start a race. Keeping your knee bent, but not touching the ground. Don't rest your chest on the front knee. <laughs> Prepare yourself. And then step back, tuck in for six, five, four, three, two, one. Good, tuck it in. Straighten, lift up, find it through your pyramid. Shoulders back, breathing, hair open into mountain. Oh, we did it. That was the last of the cardio, I promise. All right, now we're gonna do our last peak pose, which again, you may want the strap for. We're gonna do standing big toe pose. So if you want, you're gonna wrap one of your feet in this strap. Hold on to the strap as we come back into mountain. So I've got it around my ankle or around my foot, like this. <sighs> Find your breath. You're gonna inhale in that foot with the strap. You're gonna draw your knee in first. Just hug your knee in here, like this. Now you have the two options. You can just open up your hips here. Actually, that's probably good just to do a little warm up slash cool down. Remember not to lock your knee. Find balance on a wall if you need it. And then come back in. And now what we're doing from here is you're gonna try, again, this doesn't work for everyone, but try to extend your leg. Let's see, I'm holding my strap here. Or if you can hold it with your, I need to hold a wall here. <laughs> if you hold it with your hand, maybe you can try and straighten your leg here. Now you don't wanna lock your knee and it can be bent. There's nothing wrong with that. So leg straight and then you have the option here keeping that pata band on your foot to open up your hips and find an open big toe pose, standing big toe pose. So the other two ways to do it are hold your foot here <laughs> or the ultimate is two peace fingers on your big toe, hence standing big toe. Notice how I'm holding the wall here. I'm holding my big toe, going in. Oh yeah. Huh. <laughs> okay. Shake it out. We're gonna do the other side. Find your strap if you need it. Switching ankles. Center, mountain pose. Breathe. Feel padabanda. Lock your feet down. And then switching to the other side, keeping the standing knee slightly bent. Hug your knee in first. Still breathing. Open up. Hinge you get the hip here. And then peel it back in. And now option to extend your foot forward. 
not locking either knee and then maybe opening. And then gracefully <laughs> finding your way back down. How are we doing for time, guys? Good. Okay, we're going to cool down. We're going to go through gate. Again, if you want to, here, put your mat down, uh, your blanket or a cushion onto your knees, just like hero's pose. But this time we're going to stay up, shoulders back, extending one foot to the side. So my heel, remember that outer blade of my foot? I'm going to try and press it down and have it touching the mat. If it doesn't work, don't do it. But I have the outside blade of my foot touching. And this might be enough. If it is, stay here breathing. We're starting to cool down finally. All right. If you want, with me, inhale, hands up. And then exhale, lower the hand on the same side of the leg and start to get a side stretch. Breathing. Maybe you look at your foot. Maybe you have a neutral gaze. You should feel a little stretch in your leg and groin and a little on the opposite side too. Then inhale, arms up. We're gonna do opposite side. So now you're falling over, pressing with the outside edge of your foot, lowering to the other arm. And here, you're making almost like a little, little stack between your lower hand that's on the ground all the way straight up to your other arm. Maybe you look at the raised hand, maybe you look down and find what works for your neck. Wherever you are, breathe. Inhale, using your core to lift you up. Stay here, let's do a little T-pose. This is my hero after all. And then hands, goal posts, shoulders, back, feel those shoulders. We didn't do a lot with them today. And then lower, draw your foot in. We're gonna to switch to the other side. If you need to stretch here, go right ahead. Opposite leg goes out, planting the outside blade of your foot. Inhale, arms up. And again, you can stay here or if you're with me, leaning that arm that's on the same side of the leg, coming into a side bend here, finding where your gaze needs to be. It's been a long time since we've done gait together. Breathing. Then inhale, come up. Exhale, gently find your way down, planting your hand, making a line. There you go. Now find where your gaze wants to be. One more breath. Then use your core, lift up, lift up, lift up. Stay in the T. Pressing on the outer blade of your foot. Goal post arms. Pull those shoulder blades back. <sighs> Breathing. Good. And then find it down. And then bring your knees back together. We've got a little bit of time. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go into our wide-legged forward fold. I was going to do pigeon too because that's amazing on your legs. But we want to get to Savasana because you deserve it today. So we're going to go into our wide-legged forward fold. So first off, sit back. Just with your legs splayed open. Sit up straight, though. Just feel your legs here. Maybe you have a little bend in each one. Thank your legs. Jiggle them out. Oof, what work we've done. Then draw one knee in and one foot in. <laughs> you can't draw your knee in. Draw your foot in, finding a place to plant it along your opposite leg. Then inhale up, and you're going to turn towards the leg with your torso before bending, keeping a straight back. This is not about touching your toes here. Remember in our block workshop, we said you have the option here of having the block for either your head or your hands, or you could even use it up here. Or you can put the strap on your foot if you really want to get a little extra stretch. All of these aids that we use are coming back in this one. Finding what you need for your practice. And now here, take the same arm as the leg that's extended, keep them down, 
Then the opposite arm, lift up. Open your chest, spinning open so you're in a side bend, just like we did in the gate. If it works for you, if it doesn't, don't do it. And then find your way back to center, switching legs, standing opposite leg, pulling the other foot in, finding a nice place for it to rest, turning your torso towards the extended leg, inhale up, keeping a straight back folding, breathing here. Again, using a block or a strap if that's what calls to you. Wherever you are, find ease and breathe. And then keeping that same side arm on the leg, inhaling the opposite arm, opening the spiral in the chest, coming in to that similar gait pose on the other side. Breathing here. And wherever you're coming back, we're going to do just a normal wide-legged forward fold. So both legs out again. Hands in, and this is where I need a block because I am not flexible here. So you're going to walk your hands forward, keeping a straight back, and just try and fold. Now this is as far as I get. But I can use my hands on a block in front of me to enhance the stretch for me. Wherever you are, find your wide-legged forward fold. Maybe you invite a bend in those knees. Maybe you can flex your feet or keep them pointed. Find ease wherever you are. And we're going to be here for 10 breaths. And then slowly use your hands to help you walk back up. From here, if you need any other stretches while you're seated, do those. We're going to find our way back onto our backs, okay? But if there is any kind of leg, mach leg machines, leg exercises that you like, go ahead and do those. And we're all going to meet back. Maybe if you want a little more core work, you go through a boat lifting up your legs and using your core to lower down slowly. Oh my goodness, I don't know why I torture myself, but I think it's for you all. Okay, I have magically ended up in a diamond. This sounds amazing, so why don't we all do a double diamond? Hands in a diamond, legs in a diamond. And when you're ready, we're going to draw our knees to chest, just like we did in the beginning. So now we're cooling down with it, too. Finding any movement you need. Making sure I don't change the channel this time. <laughs> and then, again, if there's any other movements you need, go right ahead. We're going to be going into our twists here. So keeping one knee in, extending that other leg, feeling how different your legs feel. Maybe roll your ankles here for the foot that's up, both directions. And then give your knee a really big hug and maybe even try to hug it towards your underarm a little bit. Feel the movement of your hip here now that you've had all that stretching. And then when you're ready, you're going to guide it over. And again, if you have a strap and you want to do a strap twist, go right ahead. If you need a block under your leg, go right ahead. And wherever you are, again, you can keep your knee bent or straighten your leg out. Finding your stretch, keeping your shoulders down here. Both shoulders should touch. And your arms can go out in a T. Maybe you look at the opposite direction and breathe. I can feel my leg is shaking. No pain. Just a big workout. We're going to stay a little longer here. Just breathe. And when you're ready, draw it back in. And again, now maybe, because we did so much, you want to keep that knee in and then open it to the same side that it's on. So you're just opening up your hip here. Finding... Maybe straight leg, 
just noticing the flexibility of your hips now. And then pull it in, give it one more big hug, and then switch it out. Okay. Maybe rolling your ankles on this side. And then give it a big hug in, maybe going towards your underarm here again. And then find your way over using whatever aids you need, keeping your shoulder blades down here as you do a full twist other direction. Maybe arms out in a T, maybe you look the opposite way of the leg and breathe. Six more breaths. Maybe try straightening or just find ease wherever you are. And when you're ready, taking that knee, guide it to the center. And then again, maybe play around with opening it up. On the same side, feeling your hips here. Maybe you straighten your leg. Just find what your body needs on the other side. And then draw your knee back in. Give it one last hug. Draw the other knee in. Give your both legs a hug. And we're going to go back to bridge just like we started with for our last movement. If there's other movements you want, feel free. We've already done our bridge warms ups now, so if you would like, we're going to do a set of three, just like in a normal quote unquote yoga class. So planting your feet, drawing them in close to your bottom, hands should almost be brushing your heels, palms down, shoulders back, head down, pressing with palms, shoulders, feet, lifting the hips here. And again, option to put that block in between your legs or underneath, whatever works for you. On an exhale, lower down. One breath, then inhale, come into your next bridge, maybe just a little higher than the other one. Breathing. And lower. And now if you have wheel in your practice, you are welcome to do that. I won't because I don't want to lose my wig. <laughs> inhale, pressing down, going into your last bridge of the practice. For five, four, three. Two, and wherever you are, tuck your chin as you lower back down. And my friends, this is all we have planned. So for our Savasana, we're going to do a long one. If you would like, I would say legs up the wall may feel glorious for your Savasana, which you can put a cushion underneath, and that's where you scooch up to the wall, and you just put your legs up and find a cozy resting place. Your legs can be open, closed, bent, up, down. If you missed it, it's in our wall yoga, which is on YouTube now. Or you could just do a normal savasana or maybe a diamond, maybe a queen's ramp using pillows. So I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to do any last stretches and to set up into your glorious five and a half minute savasana. So find where you wanna be for that last little nappy. Maybe cover yourself with a blanket because you are going to cool down now. And again, if you're with me and you're just doing a normal savasana, we're lowering back, legs a little wider than mat, shoulders down, and we want to ground because we use padabanda, so placing your palms down if it works for you. Come back to your breath. Whatever savasana you have, maybe you lower those lights. Make sure that playlist is on. It's a calming music, hopefully, if it's in order. Notice your breath. Notice how different your breath is. After that pretty intense workout, one of the most intense that we've done here at Designs for Zen. We're going to do a body scan, guided savasana. Starting with your legs and feet. 
Notice your toes. Maybe give them one last wiggle. Notice how different they feel after being specifically worked out today. Notice the edges of your feet, your heels, where they touch the ground, still grounding. Your ankles, maybe roll those ankles one more time. Your legs, starting with your calves and lower legs, shins. See how they feel. Maybe give them a little roll back and forth. Just finding ease. And up to your thighs, quads. How do they feel? And then into your groin and hips. I know I definitely feel a difference here. Maybe adjusting the flesh on your bottom. Just finding ease and letting those hips fully roll open. The small of your back. Just notice if it's tight, consciously breathe into that area and try and relax just a little more. Your chest. Take a couple breaths in silence and notice your chest rising and falling as you breathe. And then turn your focus to your fingers, maybe giving them one last wiggle. And maybe rolling your wrists here and thanking them for helping. Keep those shoulder blades back and down. Maybe again, adjusting the flesh under the shoulder blades, finding full relaxation. Again, maybe planting those palms back down, feeling the grounding of your body. And then noticing those shoulder blades now that you've adjusted them. Fully pressing into the earth along with your heels, and the backs of your legs, your bottom, maybe some of your back, your hands, the backs of your arms, and now turn to your shoulders. And then look at your chest, <laughs> your inner eye, look at your chest, your eyes should be closed. And your neck and throat. See if there's any tightness in the shoulders and neck and just maybe rock your head from side to side, letting go of any last tightness. And then notice where your head touches the ground. Shift your focus to your jaw or maybe open and close your jaw. Loosen your tongue from the top of your mouth. Relaxing your cheeks and your eyes and the area between your eyes where that little brow is. Just relax everything in your face. And then go to the crown of your head. Imagine a white light shining from the top of your head outward. And all the energy from grounding and connecting to the earth goes through your body and shines out through your head. Taking the energy from this practice Cleansing your body with each breath in and out. And now you can focus on your intention or just observe where you are or maybe watch your breath as I give you a few minutes of silence to complete your savasana.
And if you'd like, you can remain here as long as you need. You deserve it. But if you're with me, begin again to just invite gentle movements, rolling your wrists and ankles. Maybe inviting a deeper breath in. Maybe now inhaling deeply and going into a big full body stretch. Oh, feeling those muscles that worked so hard. And as you're ready, just roll on to one side and stay there for a moment. As we wrap up this practice, Deku said he always does his best. Keep going. And remember, success is measured by how you rise after you fall. Don't quit. Commit. You can do this. You are a hero. And as you're ready, roll back up to seated, maybe keeping your eyes closed or invite a gentle gaze. Feeling how your body feels. Swirl the shoulders back and down. And as we complete our practice, remember you have to hydrate after this. Drink lots and lots of water. Maybe do some more stretching if you need it. We're going to conclude by coming back to our intention, whether that was meeting yourself where you are or whatever it was you had for today. On an inhale, raise your hands up. Exhaling, drawing hands to heart center and either choosing to keep this intention or to find a new one for the rest of your day. And again, two breaths, one to cleanse, the other to seal. As we finish our practice, inhale, exhale, and deep breath in, and let it all go. Start drawing your thumbs to your forehead, the center of your intuition and knowledge, the light and love and hero in me. Thanks, the light, love, and hero in all of you. Go in peace, and I will see you next week for our last of the year. Namaste. Thank you again for being here. Yes, this is almost it. Next week, we're doing Spirited Away Yoga, which is going to be my personal favorite yoga moves. A little less intense than this one. And we're also going to be having some amazing music. So get ready for that. And then for 2020, we are going to go back to monthly with the occasional convention thrown in. So keep an eye on my Facebook page. It'll be the last Saturday of every month. Different themes. And again, they'll be more posted on Facebook and all my social media at Riftwing Designs as we go forward. So again, thank you for joining me today. I'll stick around if there's any questions. And if not, I will see you next time. Take care, everyone. <laughs>